Sony has filed a new patent for the PlayStation 5, which might change the way some gamers play competitively. Plus, Phil Spencer, the head of Xbox, talks about the DualSense controller and Marvel's Spider-Man 2 possibly teased by the Miles Morales mocap actor. All this and much, much more in today's edition of the Salty's PlayStation News Report. Let's get into it. What's up, PlayStation Nation? In today's first story, Sony has never delved too deeply into competitive gaming, but based off a new patent that might be changing, it seems like they're planning a new esports friendly feature for the PlayStation 5. Sony recently filed a patent for the PlayStation 5 tournament system that would allow players to easily set up online tournaments without the use of third party software. If you guys have been living under a rock, Sony recently acquired Evo, the popular fighting tournament. So so this might be the next step for them in their push into the competitive gaming scene. According to the patent, Sony envisions a system that could be used to organize both small tournaments with friends or major events with multiple games and large number of participants. This is an excerpt from the actual patent itself. Online tournament integration may allow for tournaments to be held by individuals, developers, and other vendors. Providing online tournament integration may involve simple tools for setting up and running a tournament at the platform level while providing visibility into specific games. As such, a user may use such tools to set up a small tournament with friends who are casual players, while an event planner may use such tools to run a large tournament with numerous participants, complex rules, and involving even multiple game titles. I don't know about you guys, but this sounds exciting as a gamer, and even though I'm not really in the competitive scene, I can see how this would be exciting for even friends to organize tournaments. And then on the larger scales, you can have event planners use the tools to run large tournaments and involve multiple gamers around the world. Just think of the possibilities players could be able to organize team invites, match scheduling and more through gaming network platform, likely PlayStation Network and organizers would be able to customize tournaments using a number of parameters, including the game titles to be played, type of tournaments, elimination, double elimination, Swiss system, round robin, deathmatch, you name it, you could put it in there. It it would be amazing to have this going on and be able to watch it online. Honestly, I talk about a lot of patents on this channel and I need to remind you guys that every patent that is filed by PlayStation does not see the light of day. A lot of times they don't, but in this case, I think this is probably a sure thing as it gets. It sounds like a pretty robust system and considering that Sony purchased EVO, the fighting game championship recently and EVO 2021 kicks off on August 6th, we might be able to get an announcement very soon it'd be cool to kind of combine these announcements in some way or fashion but we shall see but I want to know from you guys are you guys fighting aficionados are you good at fighting games do you watch Evo and what do you think of this patent do you think you'd use it for organizing tournaments for you and your friends on PlayStation let's talk about it in other news Microsoft's executive Phil Spencer has sprinkled praise over Sony's DualSense controller if you've been following the channel for any period of time you would know I'm pretty much a fanboy of the DualSense controller. I can't sing enough praise for this controller and honestly it's the focal point and the defining point of next gen when it comes to the PlayStation 5. It separates the PlayStation 5 from the Xbox Series X which I do own by the way. Ever since the DualSense was announced way back in the day before the PlayStation 5 came out I was intrigued but you cannot understand how mind-blowing this tech is unless you actually have it in your hands and you feel the haptic feedback or the dynamic adaptive triggers, the built-in microphone, it's all there. I remember clear as day popping in Astro's Playroom and experiencing all the different sensations in my hands when I was playing that game because in my opinion, that's the best integration of the DualSense yet on the PlayStation 5. Being able to feel individual raindrops as they fall or feel how the ice is cracking underneath you or be able to feel when you're walking on metal or to squeeze something and feel the resistance there in the triggers. Other games like a Demon Souls have been awesome as well, pulling a bow back and feeling resistance or the crackling of fire, or in a game like Ratchet and Clank, A Rift Apart, being able to feel how different guns feel completely different than one another based off of how the haptics are responding or the dynamic adaptive triggers, if there's more resistance or less resistance. Well, now that I've got my gushing of the DualSense controller out of the way, Microsoft's Phil Spencer, the head of Xbox, actually feels the same way about the DualSense controller. He said that the format holder has done a 
nice job with the PlayStation 5's DualSense controller and hinted that the Xbox manufacturer could update its own controller. Speaking on the latest kind of funny Gamecast, Spencer didn't hide the fact that the team Xbox is obviously quite impressed with the DualSense, but doesn't reckon there's any more bespoke accessories coming from Microsoft just yet. This is what he had to say. We're definitely thinking about different kinds of devices that could bring more games to more places. There's probably some work that we'll do on the controller. I think Sony's done a nice job with their controller and we kind of look at some of that and think there are things that we should go do, but we're probably not in the more bespoke accessories place right now. We just look at what happens on Windows and other places and see if there's a unique opportunity for us right now. I don't think there's anything that's obvious to me. Phil Spencer likes to talk like a used car salesman with a lot of fluff in his speech, but long and short of it, they're going to implement a lot of these features into an upcoming controller. But that's not going to be coming out for a while, to be honest, and that's a shame because I have played on the Xbox Series X and the controller feels cheap to me. There's lots of clatter when you use it. It just feels plasticky and loud, and it's just the same old controller they've been using, a little bit of upgrades to the D-pad, but overall, it just doesn't have that next-gen feel to it like the DualSense, and honestly, they'd be smart to upgrade the controller because Sony took lots of time and money in developing the DualSense controller, and I think that that's a big selling feature for gamers when they look into buying into next gen. And if it's a decision between the Xbox or the PlayStation, there's specific examples for myself where I've chosen to play a game on the PlayStation 5 platform because of the DualSense integration. A good example of this would be Dirt 5. The haptic feedbacks of Dirt 5, I'm not a big racing fan. And the only thing that connects me to that game is being able to feel the resistance and the triggers and the haptic feedback. It actually feels like I'm racing. And now don't get me wrong, it does not simulate what it's like to actually be in a car and push the pedal down with your feet. But in, in an essence, the resistance and the triggers when you're, you're going over different environments, it does give you that feeling and that immersion, which I don't get on Xbox. But what do you guys think about Phil Spencer's comments on the DualSense controller? Do you think he was kind of just blowing smoke when he said that they don't have an opportunity for them right now? And it's going to maybe, maybe they're going to do it, maybe not. And do you have a PlayStation 5? And what do you think of the DualSense controller? Is it a game changer? Let's talk about it. In a final bit of news, Marvel Spider-Man 2 was possibly teased by Miles Morales, mocap actor. Insomniac Games has not officially announced Marvel Spider-Man 2, but let's be honest, it's in development, all right? I mean, that game just sold like gangbusters. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Insomniac Games has been busy, to say the least. They put out Spider-Man Miles Morales. Then they released Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. So they're putting out games like it's going out of style. Spider-Man PS4 was released in 2018, and the team has been hard at work on the sequel, believe it. The motion capture actor who portrays Miles Morales in the video game universe has teased that it might just be in the works for real for real. Interesting enough, actor Naji Jeter quickly pulled off an image off his Instagram page, which I have for you guys right now, which suggests he may have let the cat out of the bag a little bit too early. There wasn't much to see. It was simply a host of him in a mocap suit, but you kind of put two and two together and you know what's going down. Miles Morales is going to be in the next Spider-Man. People have been talking about this for a while. I myself included, and I think it would be awesome to kind of have an into the Spider-Verse type situation going on in the the next PlayStation game because we just got Miles Morales that set up his story and his arc and we have Peter Parker's story which we started in the PlayStation 4 game and we want to continue that. I'm not going to spoil what happens at the end but it sets it up for a lot of different villains at the end. Plus we have the new Spider-Man movie that's going to be coming out. Spider-Man Far From Home. A lot of things are lining up for this game to kind of follow suit. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was a smashing success. I think it's just kind of a no-brainer to go that route. They need to change this game up in a way that's going to get gamers excited and I think one of those opportunities would be to include some kind of a co-op aspect into this game make it a two-player co-op game or even a four-player co-op game because you could have all kinds of spider men and women you got spider Gwen you got spider noir you have the all kinds of options to put in there as playable characters now it'd be up to insomniac to make sure that this is seamlessly integrated into the game and doesn't wreck it but you can't just continue to do the same old same old because if they keep going back to that well and drawing from the same stuff, people are going to get tired of it and it's going to become stale. So they need to evolve the franchise. And I think this would be a perfect way to do it. But what do you guys think? Do you think that mocap actor kind of let the cat out of the bag? Obviously, we all know this is going to happen, but it's interesting that he's in the game again. Do you think he's just going to be kind of a playable character like before where it's separate? Or do you think there's a possibility of co-op in the game? And would you like to see
see a Into the Spider-Verse type situation and co-op in the game. Let's talk about it. But that's it for today's edition of the Saltiest PlayStation News Report. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. If you guys are new, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can stay up to date with all things PlayStation and PlayStation 5. Have a great day. Have fun gaming. And as always, stay salty, my friends.